Hi there, welcome to this lecture. Now we're going to get even more practical, and I'll show you how to work with real data um, in just data into Elasticsearch. And for that, we're going to be using this tool called Logstash. And this is a typical stack they refer to it as, where there's a combination of Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Elasticsearch is the core, right? That's the engine where everything is stored and, and searched. And Kibana is the user interface that we've been using to interact with Elasticsearch. Logstash is the middle guy. It's supposed to sit between your application or your, your data source and Elasticsearch. So it facilitates the ingestion of data into your search engine, into Elasticsearch. So you can have applications uh, generating logs, and those logs can be ingested into Elasticsearch real-time using the data pipeline that Logstash uh, facilitates. So in this course so far, we were using the put command to index documents into Elasticsearch, right? And that was a very manual process. And we were, doing, we were just doing that to test out the features of Elasticsearch and figure out how, how it works. But using Logstash, we can get practical and ingest real data into our cluster. So let me actually uh, take you over to the website for Elasticsearch. And this is the stack that I'm referring to, the ELK stack. So Kibana, you know, we've been using it to interact with Elasticsearch. This is the front-end tool. And Elasticsearch, this is the core, right? Search, analyze, and store your data. And then down here, there are a couple of other um, tools, which I, you know, I consider these auxiliary tools to make your life easier. It's enough to just know Elasticsearch and Kibana. These two are, are very important, especially Elasticsearch. But these two are auxiliary tools that can help you um, work with Elasticsearch. Logstash, right, is a dynamic data collection pipeline. The perfect use case for Logstash is application logs, right? you got applications running, and every minute that ticks by, it generates logs, and that data could be ingested into Elasticsearch using Logstash. And a lot of the examples on the Elasticsearch website have to do with, you know, stuff like Apache logs and timestamps and so on. So I won't be using that as an example. We're going to go into an actual data set. And this is going to be a real-world data set that you can analyze and and uh, run your aggregate queries on and perform searches and so on. So navigate over to a website called Kaggle.com. This website provides real-world data that you can practice your data science skills with. And uh, if you click on data sets here, you'll find real-world data that people have uploaded, right? House sales in, in King County, USA, Texas death row, executions info, and so on. So the new data gets uploaded onto this website every day. And some of these data sets are very, very large. But I'm going to pick something that is in the middle, you know, not too much data that your computer crashes, uh, and also healthy enough to be a practical example for this course. I'll pick a data set that we can all relate to. For example, cars. Right here in the search box, just type in cars, and you'll see... Um, this data set right here, classified ads for cars. So let's select this. And here it just provides some information about uh, what kind of data this is in Czech Republic and Germany over a period of more than a year, blah, blah, blah. These uh, cars, uh, car sales were recorded. And the content of the file that we're going to download is right here. There's These are the different fields uh, that are going to be part of this file, the transmission, the door count, fuel type, the price of the vehicle in euros, the maker, the model, and so on, the mileage or kilometers. And uh, you can download this file by clicking on this download link right here. It's a 92 megabyte file, so it's pretty large. And it's going to be in CSV format. If you scroll down, this is the name of the file. And notice it's .csv, meaning it's comma-separated values. So uh, each column is going to be separated by comma. And then you know, these are the different rows. So if you want to preview what this file looks like, you can, you know, scroll down and look at the data to get an idea. But we're going to be opening this up in Excel, hopefully, if this is not too large. So let's just click on Download, and it will start downloading the file. Now, it's 92 megabytes, so depending on your internet speed, it might take some time. I've also provided this file as part of the course in case, you know, they change the links or the URL links on this website and this file is no longer available, uh, that will throw things off for you. So I've actually provided this file as part of the course. So anyway, we've downloaded the file. If you click here, it'll, you know, we can check out where it's 
uh, been downloaded to. So I'm actually going to move this file to uh, my home directory, uh, which is right here, empty as a mod. So let's head over there, and this is that file. I'm going to rename it to something easy. Uh, let's just call it cars, okay? And I'm going to create a folder here. Go to uh, you know new folder, and we'll call it data. And I'm just going to move this file into this data folder, okay? So let's open up this file. It might take uh, your computer some time, since this is a pretty large file. I think it's uh, it should be over a million records if it's 92 megabytes and it's comma separated values. Um, it might be uh, well over a million records, but we'll see. Uh, so it may take a minute or two for you to open this file. I'm just going to sort of zoom ahead, pause the video, and zoom ahead to the point where uh, it's time to open this file up in Excel. That's the default application in my computer. Uh, if you don't have Excel, you can open this in Notepad or whatever text editor it is that you're using for your operating system. Excel application recognizes CSVs and it's able to put them into a table format. Okay, so it seems like this file, uh, it says it's file not completely loaded, right? But that doesn't mean Excel will not open it. If I hit OK, it will open what it can. And the reason for this is this seems to be a very large file. If you go all the way to the bottom, let's scroll all the way to the bottom, and there are well over a million records in this file, and Excel has a limitation of, of this many records. It can't open more than that. So, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that we won't have access to the entire file. We'll have access to all the records in Elasticsearch. Remember, Elasticsearch is capable of big data, but Excel is not meant for big data. So that's this is all we can see, the first uh, million or so records. But anyway, let's uh, take a look at what kind of data this file has. So we have different uh, manufacturers here, the Make, Ford, BMW, Toyota, and Suzuki, and so on. These are the brands of the vehicles. And then we have the model uh, for the given vehicle, and then we have mileage, okay? And then the year in which uh, the car was manufactured. And then these are some other uh, fields here, engine displacement. I don't know what that is. I'm not a big car person, so. And then engine power, I believe this is the, probably the horsepower. Uh, body type, color and slug, not sure what those are. But here we have the transmission. It's either manual transmission for MAN man or auto automatic. The door count, seat count, and so on. The fuel type is diesel or gasoline. And the date that this uh, vehicle was listed, uh, you know, the date created that's in this column. And then finally, we have the price for each one of these vehicles. Okay, so this looks like a healthy data set that we can do so much analysis on. So I'm happy with this. Let's close this file. Uh, we don't need to save the configuration here. This is a comma separated uh, file. And I saved it in the data folder um, of my machine, right? Wherever you save it, just make sure you remember where it is because in the configuration for Logstash, we're going to have to specify where Logstash is supposed to read the file and uh, index it into Elasticsearch. We need to give those configuration details. So let's head over back to the Elasticsearch website here and navigate over down to the log stash and let's download this application. And it gives the instructions uh, down here, you know, installation steps, download and unzip the log stash file, prepare the log stash dot conf file, the config file, I'll show you how to do that. And then we run the log stash application using the configuration file that I'll show you. And there's also a video that you can watch and getting started guys. So I'd recommend you read through those if you're interested in delving deeper into Logstash. But don't do that right now. Let's continue on with the course. You can come back to that later if you're ever interested. There's some great documentation on this website. But let's go ahead up here and download the file. I'm going to get the tar file right here. And it's going to take a few minutes to download depending on your internet speed. And there you go. I think it's done. Let's head over to that. So this is that file. Let me copy it and uh, paste it in my home directory. And I'm going to show you how to unzip or, or untar this file. There's a special command uh, in Linux. If you're not uh, familiar with it, don't worry. I'm going to go over it right now. Let's open a new tab and navigate over uh, to the home directory. Type in CD and that's going to take you automatically to the home directory. And this is that file. All right? And we also have our data folder in which I loaded that uh, CSV file. So to extract or untar this file, we're going to need a special command. It's called tar minus xvf and then the file name. Then just hit enter and it's going to unzip that file. And notice 
in our file system, it generated this folder. So it extra extracted the contents out of here into this folder. So that's it. That's extracted. Now we need to configure the log stash file. Now really quick before we configure log stash to work with our Elasticsearch cluster, uh, let's go up to this learn tab. I just want to visit the documentation for log stash real quick. And there's this documentation. Uh, let's just click on get started and look for log stash right here, log stash reference 5.4. So let's visit the configuration section. And this is what I want to cover real quick. When you kick off log stash, you do that with the intention of loading some data. And the structure of the file, right, the data that we have, for example, for cars, we have the different columns and their data types. So this configuration file needs to be set up with the columns and their data types uh, if you want to configure them specifically. And then you have to specify which Elasticsearch instance the file is going to be loaded into. So there are basically two major steps. There's the input uh, in which we can state that we're going to need the file, and I'll show you how to do that. And there's the output, which is going to be the Elasticsearch cluster, and we specify the host and port and so on. And when you run the application log stash, you do it like this. You specify uh, in the bin directory log stash and then minus F, and then you state the configuration file that you want to use uh, so that log stash knows where to get your file and how to index it into Elasticsearch. Look at structure of a config file, and these are the major uh, parts. The input, the filter, this is where we specify the different fields, the, the columns of the file, and then the output. This is where we're going to state the Elasticsearch instance details. Okay, And this has its own proprietary language that looks like this. Uh, it's not really JSON. It looks like JSON, but it's not JSON exactly, because notice the fields don't have quotations around them and we specify the path. But I'm going to show you how to configure this log stash to work with our file and to index it into Elasticsearch. So let's do that right now. I'm going to open up a uh, text editor. I'm using Sublime Text. And I'm going to save this file. We'll do File, uh, Save As. And I'm just going to save this file in my home directory in the data folder that we created, right? In the same place where we have the actual CSV file. So I'm going to call this logstash.config. And you can name this file whatever you want. As a matter of fact, let me make it more specific to cars because that's the kind of configuration we're going to be doing in this file. So do logstash underscore cars.config and let's just hit save. And here we're going to specify the input, what is going to be the input, where is going to be the output, right, which cluster the file is going to be indexed into. So the first thing we need is input. And Inside of here, we specify what kind of input. So it's going to be a file. And then inside of here, we specify the path. And we use these. Uh, this is a syntax that comes from Ruby. It's sort of like a map. Uh, this is the key and the value. Uh, so we, we state the value in a string. And that's going to be the location of where that file is. So I saved it into users slash mtiaz mod. That's my home directory slash data folder. And then the file name is cars.csv. And the next thing we need is start position. And this is just going to be the uh, place where you want to start indexing from within the file. I'm going to put beginning. By default, it picks from the end of the file because, you know, applications typically keep logging to the same file and uh, they do that at the end of the file. But since this is just an already completely generated file, it's not going to be updated or anything while we're doing indexing. We're just going to pick the beginning of the file. And then there's this other thing called since db underscore path. Don't worry too much about what this is, but it's basically the ability to re reuse this configuration file to index the data again. And uh, we're going to need to put dev slash null there. Not important to go over what that is. The next thing is filter, and this is where we need to specify the details of the different columns and their data types. So what kind of filter? This is going to be relevant for a CSV file. And then we specify the separator that separates the different fields, right? The columns is actually just a comma. This is a comma separated file. After that, we need to specify the different columns. and the columns go into this array. Now I've already pasted the columns elsewhere, so I'm just going to copy them and paste them into 
this array. We've got maker, model, mileage, manufacturing gear, and so on. All of those things, all of the fields that you saw, that CSV file that we downloaded. So this is the CSV section right here, right? After that, we need something to uh, specify the data types. By default, Logstash treats everything like a string, right? Character data. For example, maker, we know it's going to be textual data, right? This is the manufacturer, the model. But stuff like mileage, this is an integer, right? We'd like to specify that this is uh, numeric data. And the manufacturer year, we can leave that as a string, not important. But stuff like, you know, price and um, the seat count and door count, these are numeric fields. So we want to specifically state that th these are numeric fields so that we can do aggregations and statistics on these fields. So there's a keyword called mutate, and in here we specify uh, the word convert, and then we have an array in which we specify the two fields. In here we're going to specify the column, so let's pick mileage, and type for mileage is going to be integer. And I could do that for the various fields, so I'm going to copy it and paste it a couple of times, and we're going to populate it with the different uh, columns. So price, euro, and this is going to be a float data type because we know we have decimals for the price. The next thing we have is, uh, you know, for example, engine power, which is right here. Engine power, this could be referred to as a horsepower, so that should also be an integer. Door count is another one, so let me paste that here. That's also an integer. And the seat count, that's the last value here, the last column, that's also an integer. The rest of the columns that we didn't specify and mutate, those are just going to be treated as string data, right? Textual data. So inside of CSV, we got the separator and we got the columns. And then outside of CSV, within the filter uh, section right here, we have the mutate. So we got the input, we got the filter, how we want to con convert the data. And then finally, we need output. And output is just very easy. This is going to be uh, Elasticsearch. Now, Logstash is capable of so much. You can index these uh, documents into uh, MongoDB and other types of NoSQL data stores. But we're using Elasticsearch, of course, so we're going to use that. And then in here, we specify the, the different configurations. Let me just make some room so that we can see. So the first property here is going to be the hosts. And here we specify the, the URL for our cluster. And I'm just going to pick local host. And we can specify the port as well, but um, we don't have to do that if it's if we're using the default 9200. The next thing we need is the index. So which index is this file going to be indexed into? I'm going to call it cars to keep it simple. And then finally, what is the what is the document type? Each document is going to be a particular car sold, right? So we can say document type, and it's going to be sold underscore cars just like that. The mapping is going to be created for this guy, sold cars, and it's going to go into this cars index. And each document that gets indexed, each one of those rows that you saw in that CSV file, each one of those rows represents a document that is of type sold cars that is going to make its way into the cars index. Okay? And then after this, we can just put STD out, which is sort of a Linux term, uh, meaning that you can output to the console uh, to the terminal when things are running, you can just make it print to the console when log stash is loading our file. Let's save this file, make sure we saved it in the same directory as data, so let me just make sure in the data directory, this is that file, log stash cars. It's not necessary that we keep this file in this data folder, right? You can have it anywhere in your computer as long as you can refer to this to the configuration file when we execute log stash. But I just want to keep things organized, and I think it's a good place to keep the configuration file and the data file together. So in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to execute this file with Logstash. We've got everything set up, and it's just a matter of indexing that large document into Elasticsearch using this configuration. So I'm going to show you how to do that in the next lecture, and then we're going to look at some really cool features that we could do with Kibana, such as create a dashboard, create different charts, uh, while this data is loading. And you can see in real time how the charts change and so on. So it's going to be some cool stuff that's going to be taking place in the next lecture. So I think right now is a good time to end this lecture. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.